Uh, I only got two colors on there that uh, you guys might or might not see. But yeah, yeah, I'm just really excited to paint these. I played a lot of Skaven when I was playing Warhammer Fantasy. So these models really kind of speak to me a lot. And I know a lot of people aren't huge on the Hamlin hype train, but I like a lot that he does. Just flooding the board with models. You just got to be really particular what uh, what strats and schemes you select him with. But I have a lot of the... I don't have the rats because I'll do a separate video where I just show how I'm going to just paint the rats real quick. I, I, it'll be, hopefully it won't take me more than like 30 minutes to paint the 12, 13 rats I have. You can only summon, you only have 12 on the board. So, um, yeah, looking really forward to, uh, continuing painting these. A couple of models that are really cool looking. One is you got Nyx here, who is a good boy. He's this really gnarly kind of undead plague dog. It's not undead, but he has these rats actually coming out of like his stomach. Looks really cool. Excited to paint him up. I'll show you something here. Also got this alternate Hamlin model. I like this a lot better than the one that comes out of the box. Got a very Pied Piper look to it. Very cool. And then we have the Obedient Wretch that we're going to paint up. We have these cool models. I love these Rat King models. Because if you look at them, you just have rats that make up this model. Also have Benny, Benny and the Rats instead of Benny and the Jets, who has his rat trench coat. Really cool. This model was a pain to put together. There actually was a lot of gaps. What I did is I actually used some glue and some quick dry to fill those gaps up. So you can use that or you can use green stuff. I just don't have any green stuff because my dog actually ate it. So she didn't die though, which is good. But Benny and the Jets, but Benny and the Rats. He has a fancy rat on his fancy hat. So really excited to paint him up. Uh, what other cool models we have? We have these rat catcher models that are pretty sweet. Really like these two. This one's like throwing rats at you and this one's kind of laughing and, and looking at one in the face. And then the last one we have with these set of models that we're going to paint are his totems, which are the stolen. So these children end up getting kind of brainwashed and following, uh, Hamlin to do his bidding so they're kind of they're simple but they're so kind of like like from the streets of Rotterdam those of you that have been have ever read Ender's Game uh, you'll know that reference but yeah they're kind of like that kind of feeling like it's like the uh the streets of Rotterdam just the kids are starving to death and they they come calling and listen to Hamlin to try and get some food and nour nourishment so what I've done with these models so far, it's a little tough for you guys to see on the camera. I think you can probably see it easier on this Rat King. So we did the basing already. So we have this gravel stuff, which is a really cool technical paint. It's this astro granite. It creates kind of like a stone mud kind of look. So I used that for the parts that I wanted to kind of look like stone. And then this part, I actually used caulk. And it's going to create this kind of slime effect. I'm going to paint it this kind of really gnarly uh, kind of green. And then I'm going to use this Nurgle's Rot technical to give it a real kind of pussy kind of gross look. And we'll do that with a few of the things like Nyx too. Um, and then I just primed them all brown. Take that obedient wretch. Um, primed them all brown. And then the paints that I did so far, I did two paints and that's it. So this kind of light green kind of skin tone on Nyx. That's actually just this Death Guard green. And I'll use that again throughout this whole process. And then you're gonna notice this darker green, which is a lot easier to see on the camera. And we use this Castellan green. So, and actually let me pull up the chat. That way, if somebody has some questions, I got that up. Just in case anybody's watching this. I put it in Netflix. So there we go. First thing that popped up, beautiful. We're going to mute that. There we go. I don't want to hear myself. Okay. Let's share that on Twitter.
There we go. There, and I have the chat up. That way, if anybody is going to join us, I can answer your questions in the chat. But I'm going to put up the live feed just that way I can see everything. You guys can hear the audio. Perfect. All right. So, yeah, that's kind of where we are. We got that green up. We're going to also start with some of the scorched brown, so I'm going to get into that as well. And those of you who watched me kind of paint before, speed painting is what I do. It's how to paint quickly, make it look good, get it on the table. Uh, I did uh, some God tier stuff where it only took me probably about two hours to paint the champion and then another two hours to paint the uh, followers. So if you're looking for quick ways to make your models look good on the table, ready to play within just a short period of time, it's like this is the channel that you want to be watching because I definitely... That's my definite goal is just how can I get stuff on the table and painted. So we'll go ahead and just kind of get back into it. So we have the green on the models that we want the green on except for one. And you do want continuity. Continuity, that's not a word. Uh, you do want continuous kind of continuity, there's the word, that you want with your models. Nix is probably going to be the only one that doesn't have that darker green on him. But that's fine. But I did want to put that darker green onto this Rat King over here. He's not going to be like the other one. So let's slide all these out of the way. And same thing I usually do. I'll just pull it up as I work on it. Paint the parts I'm going to work on with that color. Move on to the next one. And once again, these models from Weird are really cool models. They are a bit of pain to put together. So if you can just get the patience to kind of get through it then it's totally worth it. The models look amazing once they're together. So if you hate assembling models, either get somebody to do it for you with these weird minis or pay somebody to do it. I think I said that twice. I meant to say buy them already assembled from somebody who's trying to get rid of them or pay somebody to do it for you. <laughs> All right. Okay. I need to also see if, it, I don't know if Eric has this on chat. I'm actually looking at maybe doing a dual painting thing where my buddy Eric and I both kind of paint and just kind of talk about miniature stuff while we're painting, which I think would be a really cool thing because between us, we probably have, I don't know, 30 years, uh, 30 to 40 years maybe of miniature wargaming experience. The Rat King. If you get the Rat King where you want him, it's a pretty disgusting model. He actually puts out a crap ton of damage. Sorry, I'm trying not to breathe into the mic so much, but sometimes if I breathe out of my nose, like, like it comes into the mic. So I'll try not to do that. Uh, let me share this real quick. My buddy Eric, Facebook. Uh, not on my news story. Actually, you want to know what? We will put that there. All right, so back to it. Of course, it's the middle of the day, so people are going to be busy. But like I said, just trying to paint and get stuff out there, show people some cool tips. Uh, we're going to paint this guy with a brown kind of trench coat. I need to dig. Sorry. Going back to the, to the green. 
There's just like a scarf back here that I want to paint this green. What are we looking at? Okay. I actually was listening to three guys in a war game, which is a podcast for obviously war gaming, but they were talking about painting and they were describing just painting up and down on a model, which I thought was interesting because they said just that consistency, consistency makes the model look pretty good. And I thought about it and I was like, is that something I should start doing? But for the most part, I just paint too quick to really care, care about that. Okay, I do want him now. Okay, now we can paint the brown. Benny and the rats. Okay. Get this trench coat. And I could paint this with the contrast paint and do a uh, do that snake bite leather for this brown, but I actually it's it's a big surface, and because just I want these guys to look dirty, I actually want this trench coat to be kind of darker, so I don't want that light brown when I paint this up. I actually want to make sure it's nice and dark. So probably the only contrast paints I'll be using on this are for the rats that I want to be black. But some of the rats I'm also going to paint brown, just to have a good kind of mixture of that. So when I paint, have the rats against something that's a brown surface like this, I will probably um, paint the rats black. But if the rats are against another surface that is not brown, that's when I'll paint some of them brown, just to give them a different look. But I do like, like I said, I painted probably about 8,000 points worth of Skaven when I used to play Warhammer Fantasy. And I was actually talking to, I think it was Friday night I was talking to my buddy Eric, where we were talking about how when we went to some of these tournaments for Warhammer Fantasy, there was one time, I think we were at the Bug Eater in Omaha, and we were getting ready for that fantasy tournament. And what ended up happening is I had, I don't know, maybe like 80 rats that I had to get painted. So Eric helped me kind of like assembly line these rats out. And they weren't the best, but when you have 250 models on the table, it's kind of hard to pick out every little detail. So just the fact that there were 250 rats painted. And these were these aren't like the Malifaux rats, which are kind of tiny. There were some rat swarms and there were some, uh, some rats. But most of the rats for Skaven are actually human size. And they have armor and stuff, so they do have some more character to them than just rats. Alright. And if you are watching this shit, like if you come back to uh, watch just me paint this shit, you can just go ahead and uh, make sure that you like and subscribe. And then also, if you do like it and you want to give some of these tips to other players, go ahead and have them, you know, share it to them. Get some shares out there. Because we are trying to get more supporters. We are trying to grow the channel. We do have some great patrons. Uh, we only have a handful right now. That they enjoy our content. They enjoy the podcast. Uh, one of our new patrons, Joe Oliver. He started to support the podcast being a patron again because he likes supporting the content we're putting out, like these paint videos, some of the gameplay we do.
painting a lot of god tier stuff right now the god tier sneaky peep model i painted and these models are the first models i painted for my own stuff in like the last month so it's been really fun to get back and painting stuff that are my models These rats are going to be kind of easy to paint, but also a challenge. And you'll see why. Once we, we're going to put the uh, Black Templar, sorry, hit the mic, uh, Black Templar onto these rats for the most part. But what we're going to see is when we do that, we're going to start to see the detail that comes out. So we're actually going to try to paint the tails and try to paint all the other stuff that we see on these rats as well. Which usually I like painting the tails and the noses of rats pink. Just because it sticks out. Especially when we have all these dark colors. We're going to see all these pink tails and stuff kind of coming out of it. And it'll, it'll really kind of pop. I have painted rats before. Okay, we got him. We have our first Rat King with this brown trench coat, even though the other one already has his. Okay, moving right along. Do I want any brown on Nyx? Could do it on his collar, but I think I'm going to do that like a silver. I don't think Nyx actually needs any brown. I'll just have a brown base, but I'm not going to worry about the bases right now. Bases are always my last step. Alright, let's... these rats will actually be brown, so I don't need... don't need that because I'll actually use the snake bite leather on that. Alright, Hamlin. Let's use this brown on his hair. We might build it up to a blonde, like a dirty blonde kind of look. This Hamlin model is sweet. Sorry, his hat's kind of in the way from you guys seeing that. Like once I saw this model, I did assemble the other one. Just because I don't know what I'm going to use it for. Maybe I shouldn't have assembled it, but... I saw this one and I was like, yep, that's the Hamlin I'm going to use. Don't even care. Don't even care. Plus, that other Hamlin model is just kind of weird. Because uh, it has this like plague cloud kind of demon thing. And it's supposed to go on his base, but it just looks weird to me. Just looks weird. Okay, almost done with the horror. Okay. Cool. Yeah, and it can be, this plague kind of color scheme can be challenging to paint just because there's a lot. That's kind of cool. There's a lot going on, right? Like, it's a lot of green, like, sorry, I've done this paint scheme so many times that it's kind of just ingrained in my head, but there's so many greens and browns that you do got to find the color to pull out of it, because once again, if you just go browns and these dark greens and these puke greens, you really kind of don't pull out a lot of the character of the model. So when you paint this plague kind of style you have to just make sure that you still find the color somewhere. So like, for example, with Benny, part of the color is going to be his skin tone, but we'll also get some color with the smoke and the cigar. So that's kind of where I'm pulling it out of there. 
I'll probably even make these suspenders uh, this kind of reddish yellow orange kind of combo I'm doing because that's going to be kind of like my little accent color on a lot of these stuff this stuff uh, also the rat all these rat tails are going to be like pink so this like trail of rat tails coming off which in game this is kind of an inconvenience because if you think about it in game it's like oh, I'm going to go to Benny I'm going to can you turn your model okay okay now I'm going to come on this side can you turn your model all right I'm going to come to this side. Uh, can you turn your model? Little sloppy play there, potentially, with that stupid cloak. Almost should... The problem is you want to raise it up, but if you raise it up, then all of a sudden you see that you have this weird flatness. So the model's cool, but in-game, it, it's going to be a pain in the butt, I can already tell. Already tell. Uh, let's paint this cigar brown, too. And let's paint his hair also brown. Okay. Everybody busy on a Sunday. His, uh, he has a bonus action. It's called Tiny Rats with Tiny Hats. Or Fancy Rats with Tiny Hats, I think. It's pretty hilarious. It lets him create a bunch of rats. Get rid of scheme tokens. Okay. Good there. Okay. All right. Love it. It's a great model. This is a great model. I'm glad they gave him a buff uh, with Gaining Grounds 1 because the model's really cool. It, and it was a shame that if people weren't playing him because the model's really cool. So I'm glad they gave him some love. All right, Obedient Tretch. You're barefooted. You have rats climbing up on you. Where are we going to put this brown? Let's just do the belt. You're going to notice that, once again, like some of the brown is going where you normally wouldn't want it to. And that's fine. Um, because we're going to cover it up. I'm going to give her blonde hair, but you guys are going to see how I do this. I actually do blonde hair. I put the brown down first, and I give usually the model like a, a dirty kind of blonde look. From the streets of Rotterdam. I should almost write on their bases their name and like Benny maybe should be like my Achilles model even though it's not pronounced like I'm pretty sure in the Ender series that it's not pronounced Achilles it's pronounced some other weird way. Is there a rat going into her hair? I think that's a rat going into her hair. I'm gonna paint it brown. Okay. This obedient wretch is good in game too. She um she helps ignore like armor and um uh what's that ability where you like soak it shielded. There it is. Let's paint this. That brown will be snake bite. So maybe we just do the shoes. No, let's do this kind of black. Hmm. Let's do this brown. I 
I do have a great rust effect I do for these kind of factions and keywords. The problem is these guys don't have a lot of metal because obviously they're in the sewer and stuff, so I won't be able to use that as... I might not be able to use it at all except for those crowns, um, which is kind of sad. Okay, those will be black. This girl's like eating a rat. <laughs> These rats taste so good. I love it. So if you go on to the Breachside broadcast, there's early on, there's an episode, and it's it's great because during the each podcast episode, the episode sounds like you're you'd be listening to the radio in Malifaux, so it's got that kind of old feel to it, that old timey feel, like you're dialing into the radio and everything. But the greatest part about it is, in between the fluff and the stories, they'll do like ads and sponsors, and one of the ads was from like the guild office, and they were talking about these stolen, kidnapped children, and talking about if they're if you find them, don't approach them, but report them. And it's just funny to listen to. Listen to the fluff about them. All right. That's good for that. Uh, we'll do black hair with you. Let's do these suspenders in this darker brown. This kid's name could be Bean. You ain't worth a bean. Wear it like a badge of honor. Cool, cool. Uh, once again, we'll do kind of black. Take that stolen. Make those shoes kind of black. I just think the black, black will be cool because the brown base will um, will make it look cool. Whereas if I had a brown base with brown shoes, that wouldn't look great. Hmm. A rat catcher box. We can make that actually metal. This guy's way too excited. Like he he's been catching this rat for a long time. He's just looking at it like aha. I got gotcha. <laughs> Thought you could outsmart me, stupid rat. And the rat bites him and runs away. Hmm. Let's do some brown here. I don't know if these are like mouse traps he's got on his pocket. Kind of look like it, but not sure what they are. Alright. Don't know what I'm going to paint his shirt yet. We're going to call him okay there. But yeah, he's like super glad he got this rat. Super happy about it. Um, let's see, what do you got? You're barefooted. Yeah, let's just paint you with brown hair. This kid actually has some kind of dagger on him. Hmm. 
remember out there, folks, bad things happen. It's almost like uh, Dallas. Like, that's Dallas. <laughs> you go to Malifaux, that's just Malifaux, man. Okay. All right, so we got Brown down. Uh, what are we going to do? Let's get... Actually, I need to... Ooh, I forgot that. So... I'm going to show off my rust effect on these Rat Kings. On their crowns, on this box, on Benny's box. So I do a really cool rust effect, and actually this is going to go on Nix's collar too. So, we're going to paint these metal objects brown, but it's for rust effects. It's not going to stay brown, so keep that in mind. I'm going to do that for this knife too for this kid. But you can't tell it might be in a scabbard. It's kind of... He's got it tucked close. All right, so we're good there. I need this rat catcher. So the things I'm painting now are going to be a rusted metal effect. And I don't know what, you get, I'm gonna get the models that have this rusted kind of metal. And I'm gonna show, I'm just gonna do it because otherwise coming back to it's kind of a pain. She doesn't have it. Benny has it there. The kids don't have it because I think that's sheathed, so I'm not going to mess with it. She has a rat she's going to eat. Rat catcher just has a bag, so we're not going to worry about that. Sorry for seeing my fat fingers. And I'm going to, that's going to be the only clean metal on there is going to be Hamlin's fleet. So this stuff's going to have the rust effect. So I'm actually going to do the rusted effect real quick on this stuff just so you guys can see what it's gonna look like. All right, so when I do my rust effect, I need, you need a brown, you need that, and then you need a lighter brown. So let's move you guys aside. And then finally we need a metal, which my metal is right here, okay. So the way it's going to go is you're going to put the brown down first and then we're going to kind of dry brush slash stipple some of the lighter brown and then we're going to do it a dry brush of the orange and then we're going to dry brush the very edges with this metal look and that's going to create this very cool rust effect. So this is going to like, what was it? There was a white dwarf I read, maybe it was had to be like 12 or 14 years ago. And this is a very base effect. It was when I had my Ogre Kingdom. So that would have been 2007. Oh man, I can't believe that's like 13 years ago. That's crazy. So this is kind of a basic rust effect that I learned and it looks amazing once it's done. Okay, so, and I don't think I'm gonna have to wash it I usually did it on black primer back then, and I might wash the brown. I'll see what it looks like after I stipple it, but I don't think I'm gonna need to. So we're gonna start with this dark brown. Let me paint this rat catcher's hood because I forgot to do it while we're in the process. So you, whatever metal effect you want to be rusty, you're going to paint the whole surface brown. So this Rat King's crown, just paint it all brown. Okay. Like I said, I'm getting the hood that I missed as well. This is this rust effect is one of my favorites. So I, I wish there was actually more metal on these models so I could pull out more of this. Because it's gonna look great. So the crown is painted and it is brown. Then you're just gonna move that aside. We'll come back to that guy after we do the same for all these other ones. Same thing for this box, it's gonna be rusted. So we're going to paint the whole box brown. Okay. Let me paint 
Take this little handle. And like I said, normally I would do this probably after I do my wash and do this effect. But just because I can do it, I'm probably not going to have to wash this part of the model. It'll look cool, and I think you guys will enjoy that with this rust effect. And it's quick. It's just anything that I do is generally pretty quick effects. Like most of the time, you're going to just be waiting on paint to dry. Okay, same thing on this crown. Okay. Brown's brown. Benny's little foot locker here. It's Benny and the rats. Now make sure that you guys are sharing the page. Like I said, if you come back and watch this, awesome. Come back, watch it. If you like some of the tips, be like, hey, check this out. He did this really cool rust effect. Share it with people. It's better when people come on and chat, though. Just because then we don't just talk about painting. We can talk about nerd stuff as well. Because I just love talking nerd stuff. People can come on and tell me how horrible the play keyword is. Even though I don't think it is. I think it has its spots, especially in gaining grounds. Okay, and then the back. Okay. All right, and there is no other real metal we need to paint with this rust effect. Okay. So we got his foot locker done, and then we're going to do the same rust effect to Nix's collar. Because he has a chain on there. He's got this kind of spiked collar going on. All right, just make sure we paint the back side of this collar. Really, you just want to rotate the model and just see if there's any part you can see that would be a glaring, kind of obvious, like oversight if you didn't get paint on it. If it's underneath, like I do this a lot with uh, horses. If you look underneath the model and you have to flip it upside down to see that something's not painted, that's not a big deal to me. So I don't have a model here that's a good example of that. But let's just say that we were looking at Benny, which I'll paint this, but if it wasn't, it wouldn't be a huge deal. If we were looking at Benny and either underneath here or actually inside his trench coat, there were missing parts. I wouldn't worry too much about that because I'm just like, eh, nobody's going to see that. But a lot of these models aren't like that. All right, so we have our rust effects that we have on these models. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we are going to go back over them and we're going to kind of stipple slash dry brush this lighter brown. So... That's what we're going to kind of go back over with it. All right. So. Slide to lift. So all we're going to do, that's still, let's go back to one of the first ones here. So we're just going to go over this. 
you just kind of dry brush this lighter on there. You still want to keep, like I said, some of that darker recess kind of showing. Actually, I did this a little backwards, but that's okay. So usually, actually, I'm going to have to go back over this a little bit. That's fine. So usually what I do is you actually dry brush the dark brown on. So check fire a little bit here, folks. Sorry, it's been a while since I painted this rust effect. So let me go back and fix this real quick. So we're actually going to kind of... Actually, I don't know, that kind of still works, doesn't it? Sorry, usually what I do is, and I already have the brown on there, so I actually just need to kind of go back, maybe go back a little bit here. So we don't want all this brown to show. We do want some of the lighter brown on there. So let me just go back and fix this and I'll show you guys what I mean. So usually I start where I was, but you do want some of this lighter brown to still go. So I don't actually need this step. I actually just kind of jacked it up a little bit. Okay, that's fine. So what you want it to look like is you're gonna have this lighter brown and you wanna dry brush this dark brown on top of it. So you don't want it to look exactly like I had it before where it was mostly brown. You want to kind of go back over it, leave some of this lighter stuff sitting there. And it should look more like this. So it should look more muddied up. Okay. That's more what it should look like. So I went back and kind of did it for the crowns and stuff too and his collar where you can see that it's more dry brush than that. So, and that's where you want it. So once again, sorry for kind of messing that up, the, the order. Sorry, I gotta fix Benny's box a little bit here. So lighter brown, dry brush with a darker brown. So you should see more of the darker brown, but you should still see some of the light brown just because that's what's gonna give it its kind of flavor there. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add this orange, we're going to dry brush this and stipple it onto our areas. And you'll start to see a really cool thing happen when you do this part. So let me do it on this box because you'll see it more on this. So you get some brown, or sorry, some orange. And notice I get a lot of this off on my fingers. But you're going to start to kind of just dry brush that on there. And it's going to start to look like a cool rust on there. And you can go, obviously, the more orange you put on this, the rustier it's going to look. But remember, we're going to have silver. So we really start to get this kind of cool orange rusty box effect. And then the last step, remember, is going to be the actual metal. And I usually like having more orange showing than metal, but there will be a few spots where it's like, I will definitely just paint it metal. That way you can tell what the model's supposed to be, or that part of the model, I should say. You're like, oh, that, that's a metal box because I can see most of it's metal, but then you still see that rust effect. Okay. What's up, Boyle? What's up? How was your episodes? Good. If you want to bring me like a napkin and that caulk, I'll show you kind of how to do it. Okay. Don't need them all. 
Let me finish this orange on his crown. And I need the other guy's crown too. You already might need the model. What? Because I don't need the model. Well, sorry. I guess I will need the model. I don't know why I said I wouldn't need it. But let me just finish these guys' crowns with this orange. These are the rat kings. So they're trench coats filled with rats that go around biting people. And you got a little bit of orange on his green cloak, but that's okay because we'll wash that off later. All right, so I'll show this to people too because I had some people ask about it when I did it to um, my Sneaky Pete model that I painted. So Ty wants to add some like slime effects to the bases of some of these models for Zombicide. So let me see. So we got our Zombicide model. Now you're not going to be able to paint these. It's got a set for like an hour or so, but you can do as many of these as you want. So all you need to do this is you just need some kind of caulk, bathroom caulk, window sealant, stuff like that. And this is kind of quicker dry stuff. Uh, it usually will take, I usually let it actually set for like a day before I even put any paint on it. That way I can make sure it's dry. So all you do, this is the same thing I did for these Malifaux models, right? So all you do is you just kind of put a good amount of this on there. You got a toothpick? You need a toothpick. And then you have your model. You just take a toothpick and you literally, do you want the whole base to have like slime on it? Yeah. Because you can play around with this how you want. So you just take this caulk and you just put it on a toothpick and you just put it on the base and then you just kind of slide it around. You can make these little like pool effects with it. You can swirl it around to get swirls. You can make them look like it's kind of moving. And that's how you get kind of this water slash slime effect. And you can add as much back. And don't worry if you get it on the model because then it just looks like the slime's coming off the model. So like it's okay to put it on its feet. And if I want to put some more on the back side, just add some more. That's it. And then it would just dry. Mm, right. And then you just turn around and do the same thing for the back. Mm. Okay. But that's all this little cool water effect is and slime effect and puddle effects that I get for that. All right, so we got the orange on those models. Now we're gonna do this metal. So we're gonna shake that up real good. And we're just gonna get this right on the corner with a lot of these models. Just to really show this off a little bit. So all we're gonna do is these corners. Just gonna hit up with some metal, maybe a little bit there. A little bit underneath. Once again, just to show that there's some metal there, just really dry brush it on. There we go. So that is my rust effect right there. So you leave a lot of that rust on there, but you just dry brush some metal on there to really kind of show that it's a metal container or a metal part of the model, right? Once again, got that cool kind of rusted metal cage look to it. That's all that, that it, like I said, it's one of my favorite effects that I paint. I just, you don't always get to use it just because not everything's going to be rusted out and kind of gnarly looking, right? But definitely with this plague keyword for Malifo with Hamlin and his like rotting, you know, monsters and abominations and Nicks. These, say what, Ty? 
Yeah. The game of Malifu. Like these these rat people are not gonna have nice things. So that's our rust effect on all these different models here. Weird. There we go. So you can see it in the crown a little bit. You can see it. Like I said, I wanted to leave that mostly rusty. It'll show up a little bit more once you once we wash this brown. But you can really see it in the boxes that Benny and uh, this rat catcher have. Especially that rat catcher. It's probably the best one you can see it on the camera right there. Nix's collar has a little bit of rust to it now, a little bit of shine. And that's, like I said, my favorite effect to do. I just, unless it was like a Nurgle army, or a Skaven, these guys, it's one of the few times that I get to use it just because you know they got these gnarly weapons. All right, let's paint some of these rats. So we're going to need our Black Templar. Contrast, which goes pretty well on this brown stuff. I'm gonna paint Benny's hat is that color, okay? All right. So let's start with Benny here because he has a lot of rats, and then we'll do the Rat Kings, and we'll kind of move along that way. And remember, we're gonna try to paint these tails and noses and stuff. brighter colors okay your trench coat's a little annoying here Benny okay. and some of these rats I'll probably paint brown but I'm going to paint them black first just because it'll pull out all this detail and that way I can leave some of these rats black but then go back and paint some of them brown. That way this isn't just kind of boring looking. He's gonna wear you like a Joe Dirt trench coat. Yeah, when you have models and a horde army, a summoner army like uh, Hamlin's is, faction, keyword, whatever you want to call it, you really got to find these tricks because right now, like, there's so much detail in these models that you could really spend forever painting this stuff, which we're not trying to do, right? We're trying, the goal is to get this stuff on the table ready to play. Always my goal. Get it on the table. Let's play it. Okay. Okay, I need to slide those out of the way. Apparently, like, these rats are kind of like armor for him, where they, like, actually give him, like, sh I keep saying like a lot, but they give him shielded in the game, 
So he'll take less damage as long as there's rats next to him because of his rat dredge goat. Okay. I think you're about good with this rat coat. Okay. All right, we're getting there. What? You're done. I can go. Did you? Cool. I'll probably I'll probably be paying for another thirty minutes or so. Okay. So yeah, you see, you got that cool kind of rat cloak going on. All right. So that's Benny. Let's paint your hair black. Your one good boot. These dudes are so excited about these rats. It's like, yes, I got it. All right, so there, and let's get his good boot. It's good boot that's in the mud. My name is Mud. Alright, so we got that. There's mud on his boot. I think that's it for black for him. Uh, let me paint that right brown. Okay. We're good there. That's going to be some color. And black for her. Let's do these rats black. She loves this rat so much. That's her hand, that's not the rat. Light the lamp, not the rat. Light the lamp, not the rat. Nyx, any black? Yes, you have rats. It's pretty bad when you have all these rats that have burrowed into your innards. I gotta read the fluff on Nyx. I wonder how he got this way. How did Nyx become eaten out by rats? Okay, I think we're pretty good there. Those are like tails and stuff hanging out. It's gnarly. You can see his spine too. It's a cool looking model. Apparently he's tanky as all get out too. I haven't been able to play a ton with him. And like I said, 
we're going to paint these rats starting black with the Rat King and some of these other models. And we'll go back here and the next time we record. And we will uh, paint some of them brown. So it'll actually be a mixture of some brown ones and some black ones. So that'll be some cool effects. Alright, almost done. Because I'll probably paint these rats and then um, paint the rats up. What else do I need to do? I do have some other colors in there. Uh, what is it? The tails, I don't know if I want to mess with them yet. I might just paint all these rats up and call it good for this session. Cause, just because there's so many models, you just kind of have to space them out. But the key is just starting with colors, move on to model. Move to color, get to another color, move on to another model. When you start getting stuck, meaning like you put it in the box and you forget about it for a while, that's when you you don't paint your stuff. So doing a video like this is good or painting with buddies is good because it forces you to complete what you start, right? So next time I do a video, if you're doing it right, you should paint these guys. So I'm probably gonna complete these and then go on to showing the next thing. I'm streaming for like two different things, so this is for the Rage Quit Wire channel. Make sure you like and subscribe. If you guys like our content, share it. I think that the biggest thing is just share it with people, right? If you like what you see, if you like kind of the commentary, people hanging out, just share the content. That way we can get more people involved, support the show. This stuff, it, it takes a lot of money to do this kind of stuff, right? Because we had to invest in the cameras, the software. I actually had to upgrade hardware too. Um, I spent a lot of time editing. Videos will be edited soon. I will say that. Um, I'm probably going to get back into Adobe to edit some video content, but I do want to focus a lot on the streaming part too, because this is the part where you can interact with people the most. So it's not as edited and clean and concise as a lot of people like it because obviously people aren't going to watch the whole video right people might hang out when they got the chance but people are going to kind of go through the video maybe see what it looks like at the end oh how did he do that effect let me check this out so that's what a lot of people will do and that's fine and gameplay videos that's fine kind of go through what you want to see but the more people that support it, the more we can do this kind of thing, right? Like the more I can justify it. If we have supporters and people that watch this and it's able to alleviate some of the cost, I can do more. And it can get better. It can get more detailed. It can get better graphics, better cameras, better lighting. So it just really depends on how much we get supported. And I'll mention this more kind of in our next podcast. I did a little bit 
we talked a little bit about God tier and just like, hey, we're trying to do this stuff. Any support would be great. And one thing I will say is my local game shop has done a good job, a great job of supporting us. He actually is the one that has been getting these God tier models for me to like review, paint, play. Uh, so that's been great. Because that lets that has allowed a lot of people who weren't thinking about God tier to see how cool the models are and how awesome the game plays. That they're now thinking about getting into it. And I know some people that have bought models that way. But once again, any kind of help helps. So even if it you want to be a patron and help out the show, even if you do like five bucks, that helps. Even if you do a buck. Any amount helps. We're just trying to grow. That's what we want to do. Ah, that's cool. Okay, and we got these kids. All right, topping out the bag. Let's get the black hair. Ooh, we got some shoes I gotta paint too. Something else I'm gonna do, I just acquired some Starks. And I think something I'm gonna do, an attempt, is I'm gonna attempt to maybe paint these Starks up with just, or I shouldn't say just, because I don't have all the contrast paints, but with a lot of contrast paints. Okay, we do have little shoes. Kid's not worth the bean. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I like these black shoes. Black shoes, and then when you paint the base up, you can include like mud on them. You are barefooted, so let's just do this her hat. Looks like she's like, yeah, it's, ooh. That's gonna be cool. So she's like tearing apart the rat. Rat's getting eaten. That's how you get sick. That's why you're diseased, girl. Just pulling it apart. It'll be a small effect, but it'll be cool. Um, she doesn't have any shoes. Do you have shoes? You do not. Any black? No. Moving on. So you have a shoe. Two shoes. Cool. You can afford two shoes. Yeah, like one of the things I was able to upgrade to was this new headset mic, which is really good. I got to test it out on our recording system and see if it it records well. If it does, because it works well on other things like this, uh, just streaming, it works really well. Gaming, uh, it's a really it's a Corsair mic. So it's really good quality. All right, you got shoes. Shoes, it's got shoes. All right, good, you're barefoot, your dog, Hamlin. Hamlin needs shoes. I know you guys won't be able to see while I'm painting these because it's under him.
which is fine. There's no one painting his shoes black and you probably won't see too much of it. Neither will anybody that plays against him. Okay. He's got his black shoes. Um, hmm. I kind of want to paint these black. These little bracers he has. I was thinking about painting them like a color, but I think this would look better in the long run. So I think if I just paint this green really cool and this lighter green for his hat, and then have almost like a bronze flute he's playing, I think that'll look pretty decent. Cool. I think we're good. Meow. Alright. Cool. Uh, do you have shoes, buddy? You have that one boot. Benny has those brown shoes. You're good. Okay. We're good with the contrast paints, I do believe. Okay, before, I think of one more thing I'm gonna do. So, we're gonna use a snake bite leather. And there's not as much of this, but I do wanna get it on things like the bag. Bag, maybe some of the clothes. Mainly that back though, and a couple of rats. All right, so we'll grab the snake bite. Great one. And we'll get kind of our final line up here. She's bald, Jerry. too bad. I'm telling you, this snake bite brown is good. There's a reason why it's one of the better contrast paints. This does what you want it to, generally speaking. Okay. Look at that. Alright. Cool. Yeah, see, we start to get that really, really cool effect there. Um, that's all the brown we need on him. Yeah. So just those two contrast paints, like you can see this brown and that black alone look pretty good. Uh, we will put some gray into these rats. Uh, the brown, we're just going to leave the way it is. I'm not even touching that. Uh, don't need that. You're not going to have that, so we're good there. Let's get your belt, Benny. Your belt, that is. Having, having some struggles here. He is one of those old guys that needs the suspenders to keep him up. And this, uh, no, I didn't. So let's get these suspenders kind of a brown color too. <laughs> He's got the whole rigging system.
Tell you what, he does look like a boss though. Standing there like, yeah. What? Benny and the rats. Okay. Uh uh uh. Uh, in there now. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Don't need any brown on that. That's you, Sai. Stay a while and listen. I'm playing a lot of Diablo too. That's been super fun. It's nice to play a Diablo where you can actually die. Right? Poor kidnapped child. Okay, you're good there. These, I thought these Malifaux stolen. These children are really kind of tiny. Which they're children, so it makes sense. But man, Malifaux has got to be a terrifying world to be a part of if you're a child. Unless you're a dreamer, because you don't even know you're there. He's just a dreamer. Cool. Let's make this red brown. Cool. Cool. Crap. <laughs> dropped them. I said drop them. It's funny because this probably isn't even a belt for this girl. But I think some of this just being brown kind of gives her this dirty look. Right? So I'm totally okay with this. Alright, barefooted, fine, good. Okay, Nyx, I don't think we're doing any of this on you. Is that a cool this Nyx model? Like once I start getting in with the, some of this bone, and then there's also some like exposed flesh, that'll be pretty cool on this model. And Hamlin, you do not have any light brown. All right, let's kind of get just kind of a scope of what we're working with so far. So I'm going to end the video here in a minute. All right, so we got Hamlin, his Enforcer Nix, his Enforcer Benny. Stolen. Rat King. Rat Catcher. Another Rat King. And Obedient Wretch. All right, so... That's kind of what we got so far in this session. So this is kind of part one, uh, really starting to kind of come together. As you kind of see just the different paints and what I'm doing here. Let's take Benny that way. So we did something cool with some rust effects, which are looking really good once the other parts of the model get done. We'll really start to see that. We got some cool contrast paints with the browns and the uh, blacks. We're Next time we paint, we'll do with these skins. We'll just get this first coat on there and we'll start messing with some of the, the red and kind of like red, pink, purple for a lot of the different colors going on in the exposed parts of it. And then some of the bone exposed that we have 
uh, the tails we'll paint up. So a lot of the small details we're going to start getting uh, with these models and then we'll wash them. So next time we'll finish this up and we'll wash them and it'll be looking pretty good. Let's get you get a cool profile there. There we go. So looking pretty good. I'm very happy with the way this is coming out. This is going to be a really cool gnarly looking thing. Uh, I am going to paint this up. Obviously it's going to take a little more time because I'm actually putting a lot of effort into it. Uh, but if I wasn't, really I could probably have most of the skins and most of the colors and highlighting done next time I uh, stream this paint. But there, this will probably be three to four of these sessions that I'll, it'll take me to finish these up. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you are interested in this, just like, subscribe, share, uh, make sure, because the thing is we put out a lot of content and if it gets shared, more people get exposed to it and see if they like it. So it's just one of those things that the more exposure and sharing and likes and stuff like that, that we get out there, the more people can see this kind of stuff and hopefully get something out of it. And like I said, I know this doesn't look like much right now, but as we go through the steps, you'll see how it progress, how progress kind of works. And then it starts to look cool. Um, so yeah, because this is something that normal people look at, because if I didn't know the way this was going to look, I'd look at it right now and be like, man, this kind of looks like shit, <laughs> but I haven't put any washes on. I haven't highlighted yet and I haven't put the effect paints on. So just kind of keep that in mind as you go. It's not going to look great until it's 75%. You'll probably start to notice like, okay, this is starting to look cool. So until then, make sure that you guys like, subscribe, share. If you like the content we're putting on, uh, become a patron. Go to our Patreon page, uh, Rage Quit Wire, and you'll be able to support it. We got dice that we give out to patrons. We're actually also going to start switching from dice to probably t-shirts. I'm going to, once Chris is able to record and able to come over, we'll do a new patron video. That way we can uh, get it updated because it's been about a year and some change since we updated that video. And yeah, just, just looking forward to everything. So like I said, support the show. We love what we do and hope that we can keep putting out content that you will all enjoy. So until next time, make sure that you roll dice, throw salt, flip cards, flip tables, whatever you're going to do, because it's Malifaux. Peace.